everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We've got a special one for you today because we are going to get into the meat of March Madness, the NCAA Men's Tournament. That's right, we're, we're we're going to talk about the men's tournament. We'll we'll discuss the women's tournament real quick and briefly, um, but ultimately, the meat of it is going to be going into the Sweet 16. We weren't able to get on and record one talking about the entire 64 team tournament. So now we're going to finally get into the Sweet 16, release our Sweet 16 bracket. Uh, we also released our entirety of our brackets and saw how poorly some of us did and how pretty good some of us did. Uh, and, and Jeremy can be pretty happy about how his bracket turned out. But first, let me go ahead and bring in my co-host, Jeremy. How you doing, man? Doing pretty good. Then I'm just still mesmerized on how decent my bracket is doing, especially <laughs> coming into the Sweet 16, because I literally remember making this bracket and I'm thinking, okay, let's just, let's be real here. Let's pick this, pick this, pick this. I'm like, this is going to be a complete dumpster fire. And then you send me the message that I was doing the best. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? But that's besides the point. But I'm doing <clears throat> doing pretty good, finding a little bit of sickness. But that's what happens when you live in Iowa and one day it's 75 degrees and the next day it's 30. Um, yeah, we, we literally had 70 degrees last week and then now we, we were really into, golfing. Yeah, yeah, like a couple of weeks ago we were golfing, like a week and a half ago, something like that. Close to we that, were golfing yeah. and, and it was 70 degrees. We were talking about how we were sweating. And then now we had snow and freezing rain and all kinds of crap. So Welcome yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a hard time to live and live in pretty much any Midwest state, uh, let alone whenever you're right there in Iowa where you get just the heart of everything. But mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're right though with the brackets. Um, and, and I don't know if you saw this whenever I posted on Facebook, it's funny because I think you would admit you probably watch the least amount of college basketball, at least during the, during the season than mm -hmm. Blake and I, and you had the best bracket. Up to the Sweet 16. We, we can't speak too much. Uh, yeah. So the way the way that we'll do it, uh, the Sweet 16 bracket, we're going to release our Sweet 16 bracket tonight, or I guess today, uh, right now as we're as we're recording. Uh, it's tonight for us now, but it's going to be this morning whenever you guys are seeing this. Um, but we're going to release our Sweet 16 bracket. That's going to be a separate bracket. The one that we re that we did, but we weren't able to do an episode on because we all just got busy, and we've also got some big news to drop that we can't drop yet. We're waiting to be able to drop the big news. Um, but with all of that, um, the, the points are going to be two points for every green check mark you see on, on that, uh, bracket. So, so far, Jeremy, you're doing, I was going through the, <laughs> because I, w I was using a platform and I'm not even going to name the platform. Um, but I was using a platform that I've used in the past and it charged me to be able to do it this year. And I was like, what the heck? That's I'm, crazy. Not gonna I'm not going to pay for a bracket. I, I, I just wanted a simple way to do it. Uh, and so I, I had, had to do everything manually. And so I went through all, all of it. So as I was adding the green check marks, I was like, man, I didn't do terrible. I'm just, I'm just not happy with how I performed. Um, and then I was doing yours next and I was like, holy cow, Jeremy's doing really good. Uh, but it's, it's just, it just goes to show how mad Marchness, how mad March is. Um, because the guy that watches the least amount of basketball did the best on the bracket. Uh, and I think you were a little biased picking Kansas on some of that, but we're going to get into our sweet 16 bracket before we do first want to mention a sponsor of ours, because we have some sponsors that guys, obviously we don't, we don't partner with any sponsor without absolutely loving them and loving their product. And we give you guys the best products and the best services that we can find. And one of the best ones that we can give you, especially when we're talking about March madness and sports in general is seat geek because seat geek allows you as sports fans to find your tickets, the tickets that you want, whether you're into sports or music or theater, comedy shows, there's so much more, even parking tickets you can get on SeatGeek. Go look at SeatGeek right now. Download the app or go to SeatGeek.com and check it out because there is so much on there. But uh, if you're a fan of any of this stuff, whether, whether it be sports or any kind of events, then you know how challenging it could be to find the right tickets at the right price and finding them in the right place. And that's where SeatGeek comes into play because with a seamless mobile experience, SeatGeek makes it very easy to buy and sell tickets. So that's right. If you're wanting to sell tickets, you can sell them on SeatGeek. Uh, and it, it just takes a couple of taps. It doesn't get any simpler than the way that SeatGeek does it. And it gets even better because SeatGeek makes it very easy. They grade every ticket purchase 
uh, for you. And so you, if you see green, you've got a great deal. If you see red, it's not such a great deal. So you can go and look through their, their color coding system. And the darker green it is, the better deal it is. So make sure to get those tickets if they're the seats that you're wanting. And not only that, but every purchase is fully guaranteed. So you can shop with a complete, secure, and peace of mind knowing that your information is going to be secure. And on top of that, you can also know that your tickets are going to scan in when you go there to the door uh, or to the gates and go to your event. Now, we love SeatGeek so much that we've teamed up with them to get you an amazing offer. You can use our code R2TO and you'll get an amazing $20 off your next ticket purchase. You heard that right. $20 off your next ticket purchase when you use the code R2TO. It's an amazing deal. The best service out there when it comes to buying tickets. They don't scalp you for for all these extra fees and stuff, they give you the price right up front so you know what you're paying, and that's that's the price. They're not going to charge you extra whenever you already hit pay. They're not going to bring you all the way to the checkout page to tell you what you have to pay. It's the best best way to get it. So just download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com and use that code R2TO and give yourself some, some tickets there at SeatGeek today. Uh, you can get yourself $20 off that purchase. But Jeremy... Let's get into it because it is March, which means that we are in one of the best times in the sports world of, of the year. You mm-hmm. know, when, when you talk about March Madness, everything that's going on, it brings even people who aren't big basketball fans together because we all just have a fun time. Uh, I mean, Absolutely. if if you aren't that big of a college basketball fan, you have you, at one point in your life done a bracket that you knew nothing about with all with your coworkers at school, just because they were passing them out and Hey, let's do this for fun. Let's, let's win ourselves five bucks by, by winning this contest, whatever the case may be, March madness brings everyone together. And one thing that I will say is women's basketball has even gotten bigger here recently, but let's put a little bit of a hold to it because it's not as big as Caitlin Clark, the star at Iowa may think. Uh, Caitlin Clark said something along the lines of pretty much her direct quote is people are more excited about the women's side than the men's side when talking about March Madness and the tournaments going on. I I, I will start by saying this, Caitlin, I, I absolutely love watching you play. You are a phenom. You are just, you are lights out. One of, you are absolutely the greatest to have ever played in college, women's college basketball. The greatest, hands right. down, and and it, that can't be debated. You are going to go down in, in history as one of the greatest of all time in women's basketball. I truly believe that. And you have brought so many more eyes to the game of women's basketball. 100%. It is because of Caitlin Clark that people are, would even tune in to a women's basketball game in the last few years. Caitlin Clark, you are amazing. But put the brakes on some of this. All right, put the brakes on some of this. Nobody, unless you're an Iowa fan, or maybe you're a fan of a team that has your women's <coughs> basketball uh, you know, program going further in the tournament and not your men's, as a, as a, as a, a, a sports fan as a whole, and, and just, just taking every sports fan into account, there's nobody that loves the women's basketball tournament more than the men's basketball tournament. And, and and that's not a cut on women's sports at all. It's just facts that we enjoy the men's basketball better than the women's basketball. And it's been that way forever. It's not going to change. Uh, and so I, I love what Caitlin Clark has done for the game and bringing new eyes, much like what Sabrina Ionescu did whenever she was in college. And then now here in this past year, going against Steph Curry and, and the three-point contest. And we, we watched that. We enjoyed yeah. it. We talked about it on this it show. Fun. Yeah. Because of because of women like this, we are talking about women's sports way more. Because of 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 team sports, even like uh, you know women's sports like softball, because of what Oklahoma is doing over there, and it's just ridiculous stuff like that. There has been a a totally new world in women's sports because of single singular women like like Caitlin Clark, Sabrina Ion- Ionescu, or there's even teams uh, dynasties that we've seen like we've talked about with Oklahoma, but it's. It's not comparable, uh, and so we just we kind of need to stop this. But I'll, I'll lay off my rant and let you talk on it a little bit, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> you feel better after that little rant, Josh. But I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. It's one thing to talk about women's sports for particular um, particular events. I will admit that, 
But <clears throat> once you get onto these topics to where you're saying that the female's college March Madness is more viewed than the men's March Madness, I'm going to stop you right there. Will I watch the female's March Madness? Yeah, I will. But I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. This this year alone has probably been the most that I've watched college basketball, and nothing against that in the past of college basketball. I've just always been. If if you guys have watched enough episodes, I'm the hockey guy, and I'm not gonna lie about that. And Josh isn't either. But it's one thing to to talk the talk, but if you can't walk the walk and and bring it back up. You are just kind of shooting yourself in your own foot, in my opinion, just because I'll watch the men's March Madness any game, any time, any day of the week. Whether I'm watching it live, whether I'm listening to it, or watching highlights just about it in general. But it, it just kind of baffles me that you go out of your way and say that the women's games are more watched than the men's. I will admit, <coughs> excuse me, I will admit with Caitlin Clark especially and what she's done for the Iowa Hawkeyes women's basketball program, she's brought in so much more viewers and ratings and stuff like that. Do I love seeing teams getting more views and in each um each program that that shows their game get more revenue and watchmanship? Yeah, absolutely. I love seeing that. But slow your roll Excuse me. Slow your roll a little bit here, just because if you get to this point to where you think that we're going to get more viewership, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna I'm gonna flat out call you a liar, just because I can guarantee you that we're still gonna stick to our roots and we're gonna still watch the men's March Madness more than the females. I'll watch it during the, the Elite Eight, and that's about it. Compared to our March Madness, I'll watch it right from right from the first tip off the game at 64. Well, for, for men's March Badness, there are so many people, especially if you're invested in it and you filled out a bracket and you you just have fun with that. And yeah, absolutely. It, like most of us, most of us, like us here on the show, we didn't put money on our brackets or anything no, like that. We just no. we just love the competition Dude, have a good time. of going against each other. Hey, let's let's see who can guess this right. Uh, and and so for as many people that love doing that, I I, I, I will pull up the numbers and I'll, I'll 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 get those numbers whenever the tournament is over because it really doesn't matter until the tournaments are both over. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will pull up the numbers and prove that there are a, a vast majority of people will sit there with four screens on one TV because YouTube TV will let us do that now. Four screens on one single TV, watching four different games at once, trying to keep up with four games at once. Some people are crazy like myself and will sit there with four, four screens up there. Maybe go get another TV and set it out there with four more screens going and maybe have a laptop going. Get eight. Oh my God. You, you know how, how this works. That is we don't true. do that with women's basketball. With women's basketball, Iowa fans <coughs> tune into Iowa women's basketball because, hey, my team is doing good in a sport. And let's be honest. I was not very good in many sports, so it's a pretty big deal whenever you're doing pretty good in a team sport. You know, hey, you're, if you're corn good. growing was a sport, we'd be number one at it. <laughs> corn growing and wrestling, that's about it. Yeah, there you go. So absolutely, and and you know, <coughs> a family member uh, commented on on that post where I I, I commented on I it, saw and, it. <laughs> and you know, of, yeah, I'm 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 going to give you the the vast majority of Iowa fans are more tuned into Iowa women's basketball. Mm -hmm. than the the men's tournament i guarantee that outside of that no more more men's uh and and maybe lsu i'll put lsu up there uh with iowa maybe maybe more lsu and iowa fans not not sport fans the the fans of the sport in general um but we'll we'll go ahead and move on because that's about all that i have to talk i am i've got the oklahoma sooners up there leading right now 30 to 29 at halftime so Maybe I'm maybe I'm being a hypocrite because I'm watching women's basketball right here while recording the pod, podcast. But if if I told you how many women's games I watched compared to how many men's games, that just goes to show. And, and yeah. I think that's 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 similar across the board with with fans of the sport in general. Um, yeah. But we'll go ahead and go over to the men's tournament first. We're we're going to talk about some of the the big time upsets and some of the big time uh, you know big time kind of. Uh, Cinderella stories that we've been seeing so far and stuff like that. But I want to start off by talking about some of the snubs because this was something that was brought up in the beginning of the tournaments. 
I was, ridiculous. I, I, you guys were asking me, is Oklahoma going to make it in? And I said, honestly, I don't think they are. And it's just, it's just because there's so many big 12 teams that are going to make it. I just, I, I didn't see it happening and, and I want to see them in. I think they have the resume to make it in. Um, so Oklahoma being one of the snubs, uh, you know, one of them that got snubbed out of the, out of the, the tournament. And there's, there's teams that I watch too. that are 16 seeds. And I'm like, really Oklahoma wasn't better than them. Oklahoma wouldn't, wouldn't have put up more of a fight than, than, than they did. Um, you know, just seeing stuff like that, or, uh, you know, th- there's, there's a lot of teams. I think Indiana state's another one. Seton hall might be another one. I'm trying to think there's, there's a few others that, that were definitely snubbed out of an opportunity. Um, but, you know, do you, do you think so? They've been talking about this. Do you think that they should expand from sixty four plus the fir, the first play in tournament? Because the play in tournament, you've got. Uh, I'm trying to think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think eight teams. I might be wrong on that number, but you've got a play in tournament already in place. So sixty four plus teams. It's seventy two teams, if I remember right. <coughs> um, but anyways, uh, you know, you've you've got play, a play in tournament already. So you've got more than sixty eight teams that get into the, the, the NCAA tournament, this men, mm-hmm. March Madness men's tournament. Do you really think there needs to be more than than 68? No. <laughs> I'm we, sorry, six, 64. <clears throat> 64. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm saying the wrong numbers. I'm going to say this just like what we talked about earlier in the year with going into, into uh, playoff situations in, in college football. Leave it alone. Well, especially like, when we talk about March Madness <clears> – <throat> Sports fans will all agree, not not every single one of them. I know there's going to be outliers, but right, if you were to take a poll, if you were to take a poll, what is the greatest postseason tournament? March Madness has it by far. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just, just don't mess with the greatest postseason tournament of all time. <laughs> Literally, just, just leave it alone. Like, we already love – watching so much college basketball so much so fast and like for what you said you can have it on four screens for crying out loud you can watch all these games you want but there's a fine line between right and wrong here the right line is where they have it right now and the wrong line is if you keep expanding it then you're going to have more teams get that opportunity and nothing against any of those teams that we like you mentioned that could potentially have um, earn a shot into this tournament here, but <clears throat> you also get some of those teams to where you watch them throughout the year and they don't have the greatest team or they just don't have the greatest of year. Then those teams are going to be bickering saying we should have made the tournament, but yet you see them on TV and you look at their record. They won 10 games out of however many games, but just, just leave it alone just because I like it the way that it is. And it's been that way since since March Madness has begun. And why take it so long now to try and make something and adjust to where it's been like this for so long? So, like I said, just leave it alone and let us just enjoy our March Madness. Just because after this, then I got the Frozen Four. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think because you're seeing snubs, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's definitely teams. I think Oklahoma is one of them. <laughs> Indiana State is definitely one of them. I think oh, I think more people sure. are out, outraged of, of Indiana State. I'll bring yeah. up Oklahoma because I'm an Oklahoma fan. I'm going to be yeah, biased on you. that. Um, but you know, just just looking at it, and, and I think Seton Hall might have a, a case as well. Yeah. Uh, and and there's a few others that made a very good case. Yeah. But when you look at it, and and uh, you know, and and just take it down to to what it's really worth. Uh, you know, I. I no matter how many teams you put in there, there's always going to be that team that says, well, I'm better than this team that made it in. And, and that's, that's a lesson that I wish the, the you know, college football would, would take, from, uh, take a note of is that you can yeah. get up to 64 teams and that's still not enough. Mm-hmm. You can get up to 64 of them and that's not yeah. enough. And so, you know, we're, we're, we've talked about that, how they, they just expanded to 14 teams uh, going in 2026. That's been approved. So, I mean, it's, it's just it's ridiculous. You, you add more and more teams. It doesn't matter how many teams you add into this tournament. There are going to be teams that believe that they deserved a shot. And, and mm-hmm. so you, you want to mess with it and you want to add to it. I, I agree with you, man. And like, just leave it alone. Don't, don't sit here and add to something and try to take away no. from something and <clears throat> change something that we already revere as mm-hmm. being the great. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say so far it's been uh it's been terrible officiating throughout the tournament. Yeah. 
It has. Nebraska was one uh, that that one I wa- that was one that I was <clears throat> watching. That was the only game on TV. I was watching that with my dad uh, down in the Squatch Cave, and that that was terrible officiating. Oh. Yeah. I've since then seen other games, even the women's <coughs> tournament, seen uh, highlights from the women's tournament and seen other games that in the men's tournament that, man, the, the officiating is terrible. Terrible. It's rough. It's so one-sided in so many of these games. I hate mm-hmm. that. I absolutely hate that, especially when it comes down to a, a tournament time when you lose and you go home. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I, I just – I hate seeing that. But anyways, getting back to it, uh, with this whole talk – and I think it's because partially I think the talk of expanding it from 64 teams to even more uh, is just the pure fact that uh, so many teams turned down the NIT, uh, the, the National Invitational Tournament. Uh, and so Oklahoma was one of them that, that turned that down. I think Arkansas might have been one of them that turned it down. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, there, there were some, some big teams yeah. that felt that they got snubbed out of – out of the tournament uh and and it's more or less hey you were you had a good season we don't want to take that away from you mm-hmm. you didn't make it to the the march madness the big ncaa tournament but we still want to invite you to come and play for this tournament because you had a good season and we want you to put that on on display mm-hmm. uh, and so you know there's been a lot of teams denying that invitation throughout the years and I, my thoughts i i think that's weak I think it's weak of a player if he wants to sit out. I think it's weak of a coach if he's the one that wants to sit out. Uh, and I think it's weak of a, of a school if they decide to sit out. I also think it's robbing these kids of their opportunity to go play on the mm-hmm. big stage one more time. Yep. A lot of these kids, they're, 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 they're closing in on their, their college careers. Whether it's, whether it's the, the, the players themselves Deciding not to, they, they don't want to go play in this NIT, or if it's the coaches, the organization, the, the the school as a whole, whoever it is making the decision, they're getting robbed of that. And so the coaches, the the school needs to, the, the you know the organization as a whole needs to persuade them into going to that. Hey, listen, if you feel healthy, and as long as you don't have some kind of injury, you guys should go play in this. This is a big opportunity. You know, if 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 one guy wants to sit out go ahead i guess yeah. you you allow people to you know you you allow these players to make their own decisions but personally i think that, that if you're invited to the nit that's still it's still a great honor and and you should you should take that opportunity if you if you get invited with the nit i would if i was a head coach and i got and i got that letter in the mail from the nit saying i i can come and play i would take that like stink on you know what like you said it the best cuz some of these teams like they have a great season and they don't end up making the tournament. That's it's just how it goes sometimes. But if I were to n- deny a sh- opportunity with for, coming from the NIT, I would feel so bad as a coach just because you look at what these guys have done all season long, and especially even in the off season for training and getting them prepared for the season, just so where they can lead up to this particular situation to where they're playing in March Madness. And if I were to turn it down, I feel like not only the players would be upset, I feel like the parents would be upset just because they want to see their, their son out there playing. And for all we know, one of these teams could eventually be in the lead eight or in the final four. Like you can, you can never really know. It's called March madness for a reason because of all the madness and everything that goes on during it. And <clears throat> speaking from a standpoint, it, it would just completely mind boggle me to turn down an offer like that. And you can, you can obviously relate to that, Josh, you see so many of these teams, especially from this year to where they didn't make it. Like one team that I can remember off the top of my head is Loyola Chicago. Like, we remember them from when they had their, their monumental run in March Madness, and now we haven't seen Loyola Chicago in a while. But th- that's a team that's always stuck out to me ever since I first I first watched them play when they when they had their unbelievable season in March. But there's also so many teams, like I said, that could that could get this opportunity. I can't remember some of the teams either, but I'd have to pull it up. But at the end of the day, if you're denying an NIT deal, it, it's not a big it's not a big shame for 
for the player safe. I say it's for the for the coach again the and the school organization side of things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, who was it last year? I was trying to look it up real quick. Was it St. Mary's that upset Purdue, the one, yeah, was, one seed going down so. to the 16 seed? And then there was also Virginia lost to someone. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you're right. There's there's so many times where a small school like that has their opportunity. Uh, and, and, yeah, I, I, I just think the NIT should still be something that, that you look you look at as, hey, it's a, it's a postseason run. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not as big of an honor to win the NIT as it is the NCAA March Madness, the tournament. Um, but it, it still should be an, an honor to make it there. Uh, and personally, I think teams should opt into that more than they opt out. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's go ahead and jump on to our full brackets, uh, the, the full 64-team tournament, and talk about that first. Uh, I, I, let's, let's go through and kind of talk about some of the big ones that we thought were some of the biggest surprises because there, there was still some big upsets. Um, first, starting off with the Quesney beating BYU. Uh, mm-hmm. That one had everybody very shocked. Um, so that's a six seed losing to an 11 seed. But, you know, and, and that one shocked everybody. But when I look back on it, I think I feel kind of stupid for not picking to Quesney because they were on a roll. They were hot. Yeah. And, and so why would you not pick the hot team? That's how this works when you get down to tournament time. Same thing with NC State uh, beating uh, Texas Tech, that was NC State was an 11 seed, lo- or be- beating a number six seed, Texas Tech. I had Texas Tech making it all the way to the Elite Eight in my bracket, my original bracket. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I again, I kind of feel dumb for picking Texas Tech over a very hot NC State. Why would I not have gone with the hot team going into a tournament style? Uh, and so that, that one was a little shocking to me. Uh, there was also a, a 12 seed, James Madison, beating a five seed, Wisconsin. That was another big one. Um, Personally, I even think, and I know it wasn't that big uh, of a difference in seeding, but number nine seed Northwestern beating number eight, eight uh, yeah, eight seed Florida Atlantic, that was a little shock to me. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I, not as big, but the big one, and I'm, I'm sad that Blake can't be here to talk about it because I know he would have plenty to talk about, uh, a couple of big ones out of the SEC. <coughs> I think the SEC play as a whole was very disappointing. The SEC is supposed to be a tough conference this year and yeah, very high-scoring well. conference that's going to come in here and just run the tournament. <clears throat> and they just didn't do very good in that that no. overall, that first first round of 64. Um, first with number four seed Auburn losing to 13 seed Yale. Uh, and then Blake also a number four, <laughs> number four seed uh, Kentucky losing to a 13 seed Oakland. Oh, uh, and then also a number seven seed Florida losing to a 10 seed Colorado who I was shocked was a 10 seed. Yeah. Uh, and so just overall, a lot of big upsets. What did you view as being the biggest upset, the one that just blew your mind when you saw it? I mean, you had a really good bracket. I'm, I'm, I pulled yours up just now. Yeah. Like I, like I mentioned before, you had you had the best one out of all three of us. You only have three teams that did not, make, make, not make the Sweet 16. That's that's mm-hmm. incredible. So So – Tip of the cap to you. I know I'm not wearing one right now, but yeah, uh, but a good seed. But what, what was your biggest upset? The biggest upset for me, like I watched this game, was the Kentucky upset when they lost to Oakland. And the one player that Oakland can be thankful for was Jack Golke. Yeah, That dude is an animal. A D2 transfer coming up into Oakland and showing off what he did back when he was playing D2. That guy was literally launching threes, and I'm thinking, no way that's going to get. Drops a bucket. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy can't miss. Like, he had one of the craziest 48 hours to just – Oh, he's a legend. Brilliant. He's a legend. Uh, it, and and I, I saw the, the stat. I, I'm pretty sure – I don't have it written down. He I, probably, I think record. it was like – yeah, I, I think it was like 347 total threes that he shot all season long mm-hmm. and only eight two-pointers. Yeah. <laughs> that just goes to show you what that's really this man dumb. is made of. That that's dumb. Like <laughs> who who is shooting out of the three point line? Basically every shot of their of their college career. <clears throat> that just that is dumb. But you yeah. know what? Uh, yeah, Jack Golke. I mean, you were you you were a, a, a legend for forty eight hours. Uh, and hats off to you, man. You knocked off Kentucky, who yeah. I really had a hard time trusting. Anyways, 
That's why I had them losing the next round. I didn't expect you yeah. to go and upset them first round of 64. Yeah, me neither. That was definitely a shocker for from my bracket in the beginning. From when that first happened, I'm like, well, and here goes everything. But no, that was definitely my biggest one. But outside of that, my next biggest upset was probably the JMU when I watched their first game. I'm thinking, like, don't get me wrong, JMU is a good basketball program, but I, I sincerely didn't think they had what it would take to get it out of the opening round. Then when I first pulled up the score, I'm like, well, like I said, I am not a basketball guy. I am really wrong here. And they uh, they must have heard me, heard me say that, and they proved me wrong. But unfortunately, then – Next round, getting completely obliterated by Duke. Then, yeah, yeah, they got was, killed. I was watching yeah, that, one <laughs> that was, last night. That yeah, was tough. That was, that was that was terrible. Um, it, yeah, yeah, the the JMU that one didn't shock me as much because I wanted to pick JMU, but I was like, man, that's just. I feel I felt like I was trying too hard to find the upsets, mm-hmm. and so that's what makes filling out the <clears throat> bracket so hard. I was like, yeah, man, this is. is a team that could. And then I was skipping past the ones that pulled off no the upset yeah, yeah. The, the one like i like i mentioned a minute ago like nc state was hot why did i not go with nc state uh why did i not go with northwestern who was uh who was hot you know and so um but you know one that you and uh you and blake both had them going to the uh sweet 16 and i had them going all the way to the final four was auburn uh, Auburn, that was, I, I don't understand what happened. I'm pretty sure. So I had to, I had to leave my house right at the end of that game. I, Auburn had it con- in control all game. It felt like mm-hmm. they, they made some dumb mistakes and, uh, and allowed Yale to kind of come back on them here and there. But I was like, ah, they're going to win this game. I heard I mean, it was down tough, free throws, but uh, yeah, they're a tough, uh, they're a tough team. And so I'm not going to, I'm not going to count them out. They're, they've got this game. Uh, so I just turn the TV off. We drive out to the my dad my dad's house to go watch the the uh, Nebraska Texas A and M game. Another big disappointment, kind of a shock, mm-hmm. on, on how good Texas A and M looked in that game. Yeah. Um. But <clears throat> yeah, just l- looking looking at that, I mean, that was just I, I didn't understand what happened. I got got out to my my parents' house and I was like, Auburn what Auburn happened? just lost. <laughs> how how did they lose? Like they were in control, like basically the whole game. And they lose that one, so that was that was definitely the big one. Not only a shock, but kind of a letdown. Because if if you're a true fan of college basketball uh, of a specific team, you only feel satisfied if you've made it to the Sweet Sixteen. If you didn't make it to the Sweet Sixteen, the whole year kind of feels like a wash. And if it, if it doesn't feel like that, and I'm sure Blake would have plenty to say on this, if it doesn't feel like that. I agree with what Blake's been saying on social media. You're very soft if you don't view it that way, uh, and that's that's just the, the fact of the matter. I, I think you're you're a soft fan base mm-hmm. if the Sweet Sixteen isn't the bare minimum goal. Once you make it to the tournament, you know, like that's that's what you you expect of your team. Otherwise, it's a wash. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that Auburn loss was disappointing Hard. to say the least. I I was definitely cheering for him. My Sooners didn't make the tournament, so I didn't have a team to really pull for. So I was pulling for Nebraska. I was pulling for Auburn. Now I'm pulling for Creighton. They did much yes, better. They good. look much better. They do than I expected them to. And and I I under I I, I definitely underrated their cap- their capability and what they're able to do. So I'll keep on cheering for Creighton because uh that's what about just them about. Clones? I'll cheer for Iowa State, um, and and I'll get to them in a minute. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll cheer for them too, um, just because they're they're one of those teams. I knew they were gonna. I had them going far far in my original bracket. Yeah. Uh, let me pull that one up again because I had them going all the way to the Elite Eight. I had them losing to Auburn in the Elite Eight for Auburn to move on, and so I I had them going far, and and getting to the Elite Eight is another big accomplishment for for a school. Um, yeah, it is. So yeah, I. I I, I had them going far I, I, because Iowa State was one of those teams that I thought it doesn't matter who they go against, they're going to pull off the the you know the the win because they're they're on fire. Uh, I just true. didn't take that into effect for some of these other teams. But let's go on to our Sweet Sixteen bracket. I'm going to pull up a graphic and have the graphic on the screen for you guys to see, um, and we're going to kind of go through these Sweet Sixteen brackets. Jeremy, do you want to start us off with your Sweet 16 bracket? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I made this official, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I literally printed off my bracket. 
Just because. Yeah, I sent, I sent them out and Jeremy printed it off and sent me yeah. a picture of the whole print off and everything. Hey, Dang. like I said, right? you got, if you got a printer, printer, you might as well use it. Yeah. Right. I mean, of course, talking about first we'll go to the east, having UConn going against San Diego State. <clears throat> this one, to me, was kind of like a, a no-brainer just because this is a team that I've, I've – I've watched a lot of highlights, and this is a couple of games that I've watched these guys for UConn. Then my overall pick for them is UConn for that for that game. Then going on to the next game for Illinois versus Iowa State. This one I was really really back and forth with just because I, Iowa State has been playing really they've been playing strong ball, and don't get me wrong, Illinois has also been doing the exact same thing here, but. This one was also like a coin flip for me. As much as I wanted to pick Iowa State, I just I just had to stick with my gut and go with Illinois on this pick. Um, I, it, it was such a hard pick just because both teams have been playing absolutely really good. And just think, if you make it to the round, the Sweet 16, you know you. it doesn't matter who you are. you got to keep your head up because this team could easily send you home. Mm-hmm. But um, do you want me to keep going, Josh, or do you want me to just yeah, – Yeah, go, go on down. Uh, I'll let you finish that entire left side of that bracket. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, once you're once you're finished with the left side, uh, just just the first round there, I guess this week's yeah, sixteen round. Yeah. Then going on to the next one, of course, North Carolina versus Alabama. Then uh, this one, like I said, in the Sweet Sixteen, you can never expect anything, just because anything's possible here in this situation. This was another one to where I'm thinking, North Carolina. We've we've heard their name plenty and plenty of times in college basketball. Then compared to Alabama, they're they're also in the game, but nothing compared to North Carolina. Then to me, this one was kind of a, a little bit of an easier one. I'm going the number one seed, North Carolina. And then going down to the last one into the West, Clemson versus Arizona. This one, <clears throat> this one was also kind of another easy one. Clemson has been really good in basketball. They have been they've been playing really good, hard, aggressive basketball. Just the thing is, if you go against an Arizona team like this to where they can pull up a three-point really easy, they can stick a guy down low and get a good rebound and get, get two points on the board. But my thing is you gotta you got to do what you can to try and stop Arizona, and I don't think you can do it, Clemson. So I'm going with Arizona for for my pick, my two picks in the West. Josh, I know I kind of rambled it off, but what is your bracket look like for the Sweet 16? Yours actually looks much different, uh, so maybe I should switch mine up and pick the same teams as you because you've been doing so hot. Hmm. But I'm, I'm looking at how how teams are playing right now. When it gets to the Sweet 16 round, it becomes easier to form your mind and then think about what you see out of these these matchups. Yeah. But it gets harder because teams are fighting even harder than they were before. Yeah. So you've kind of got to take all of that into effect. So I'll start off there. Number one. UConn against number five, San Diego. I'm right there with you. UConn. Uh, I think UConn, UConn could be the champions this year. And I think you and Blake both had them winning it all. Um, yeah. Do you st- do you still have them winning it all? Yep. I, okay. I made two brackets. And um, this one, the one I'm sticking with, I have UConn. My other one, I have Purdue. <clears throat> oh, okay. okay. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with UConn. I think they're, they're a tough team. Same thing with Iowa State. They're on fire, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slow them down. Uh, I think they're they're heating up, and they're just gonna keep on being on fire. Illinois has been very tough. You're you're correct on that. They've had a very tough and gritty defensive play. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with Iowa State to win this game, though. I just Ooh. think they're so on fire. Uh, and and not only that, but I'm I'm cheering for <clears throat> Iowa State. And they're one of those few teams that I, I want to keep on seeing get hot and get all the way up there. Um, Going on to that number one, North Carolina against four, Alabama. North Carolina, you're you're correct. They're a team that we hear all the time. Mm-hmm. But sometimes that underdog takes the reins. Are you? I, doing I don't. What I, think I you're don't doing? trust. I don't trust Alabama to win this game. <clears throat> but that's why my gut tells me I should just go with Alabama. I have Alabama oh. beating North Carolina. An upset there. Uh, Alabama's had a hot offense. <clears throat> I don't know if North Carolina can keep up with them on offense. That's the only the only thing that I see out of that matchup. Going on to the Clemson, Arizona, uh, I'm, I think that one you and I are similar because right? you you picked Arizona, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, Clemson has gotten there surprisingly, so I'm I'm feeling like this could be an upset. I didn't expect Arizona to get this far. 
Uh, the Pac-12 looked pretty weak to me, and so I didn't I didn't pick Arizona to get to the Sweet 16. Now that they're here, I've seen how they've played. They surprised me quite a bit. I like the way they're looking, uh, so I'm picking Arizona to get up there to the Elite Eight. Okay. So I'm, I'm right there with you on that one. Yeah. Um, let's go to the other side of the bracket than the right side of the bracket. You can go ahead and list off your, your Sweet 16 on the right side. All right. Now looking on the south side of the bracket, this one, first one, Houston versus number one Houston versus number four Duke. This one was a really tough one for me to pick just because we just saw what Duke did to James Madison, and we've seen what Houston has done since the first game in March Madness just in general. Duke is a good basketball team. They always have been. Houston here, they've been they've been electric coming in these last couple months and just all year, honestly. But, like I said, I wanted to pick the Blue Devils, but there's reasons to say I wanted to, but I didn't. I stuck with my gut. I went with number one Houston. They've just been, they've just been playing really, really good, and nothing against Duke, but I think for them, the speed factor and getting into a track meet, that's the only thing I'm scared for because if you get Duke into a track meet, I think it's going to be – it's going to be looking like a Duke win. But like I said, I'm still sticking with my gut, and I'm still sticking with Houston. Now, going to the other game, number 11th ranked NC State and number 2 Marquette. This one was a little bit easier one for me to pick, and I stuck with Marquette for that pick. Now, <clears throat> going to the Midwestern region of the bracket, number 1 Purdue versus number 5 Gonzaga. This one was a trickier one for me to pick, and both the Midwest picks were tricky for me. And I had the oppor- I, I, I almost had the opportunity to go down to Omaha and watch some college basketball, but I just couldn't get things to line up my way. Then it is what it is. But this one, I've seen Gonzaga in the past, and they always find a way to get into the Sweet 16 and even the Elite Eight and going into the finals. But this year, I think this is going to be the year Purdue is going to be going far. And I have Purdue going into into the Elite Eight. And going to the final one, number three, Creighton, Creighton Blue Jays, and the number two volunteers of Tennessee. As long as – I'm just going to make it short and sweet. As long as they don't try and hear me sing Rocky Top again, Tennessee is going to make it all the way, and they're going to – that they're my pick for against Creighton and Tennessee. It was really hard for me just because I wanted to pick Creighton being being so close to Creighton were not that far from there. And Creighton has been one of those comeback teams to where they can be down by a good number and they can always find a way to bounce back and they can put up points and win the game. But my thing is I'm just going with I'm just going with a little bit more um I don't know how I want to put it. I'm just going with a little more execution for Tennessee, and that's what I have picking out of the Midwest bracket for Purdue and Tennessee. But, Josh, what does your bracket look like? Yeah, we're, we're not that far off when we talk about the South and the Midwest here in the, mm-hmm. this, this, you know, moving into the, the – the <coughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, starting off Houston versus Duke, it's really tough because the way that Duke's been playing, I want to pick them. Mm-hmm. But Houston has been so good all season long, and they keep on proving me wrong throughout the season. I keep on thinking, oh, they've hit, they've hit a slump. They're gonna, they're gonna fall off, and they don't. They stay there at at being the best team. That's true in the nation, and so they've yeah. they've surprised me many times, uh, and they're a very good team. So I'm picking Houston there, and then Marquette, NC State. I should again, I should probably just go with <clears throat> NC State because they're so hot right now. But I just, I don't know how you beat Marquette as good as they've looked. And so, like that's that's another really tough one for me. That could be an upset there. That could be an eleven seed working its way to the 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 elite eight. Elite eight. Yeah. So I really want to pick NC State. Um, that's probably the correct <clears throat> move. But I just I don't know how you pick against Marquette. Mm-hmm. Um, going on to the Purdue Gonzaga. Both teams are very hard to trust when it gets to the postseason. Yeah. Both teams will let you down. And so that's what makes this one the hardest for me to pick, uh, at, at least as a sports fan that knows history. You have to take history out of it. I see too many, 
too many flaws in Purdue's game. I see too many weaknesses for Purdue. I'm picking Gonzaga to, to beat Purdue, uh, and that's that's the end of Purdue's big run. They made it. They made it into the Sweet 16. Congratulations! Okay. You di- you didn't get upset by a 16 seed again this year, um, yeah. but Gonzaga is going to put an end to that race. I I I feel pretty strongly on that one. Um, now Creighton, Tennessee. My heart wants to pick Creighton. I'm going to be cheering for Creighton regardless. Oh yeah, absolutely. But Tennessee's just such a good basketball team. I think Tennessee wins this one uh, and goes on to the Elite Eight. So I've got Houston, Marquette, Gonzaga, and Tennessee. Uh, let's go over to the East real quick. Who do you have winning that Elite Eight East game between UConn and Iowa State? <sighs> Who's moving on to the Final Four? If I didn't have these guys moving to the Final Four, a lot of people would be upset with me. How can you not pick UConn to make it to the Final Four? Sorry, yeah, I guess. Who, who did you have? You had Illinois, right? Yeah, UConn, I had Illinois, UConn, Illinois, yeah. But, no, I knew what you meant, but mm-hmm. they both start with an I. I know I get confusing, but... Yeah. Um, I, I was looking at my bracket, so I was... Oh, okay. I was there getting mixed go. up. But, no, I, like I said, UConn, they've just been playing unbelievable this year. And I, I'm just still sticking with my gut here, and I have UConn going to the finals here. So, I have to pick UConn for my Eastern pick. What okay, about and you, then, Josh? And then, and then you've got, uh, down in the West, Alabama, or no, sorry, you had North Carolina versus Arizona, all right? Mm-hmm. Okay, who do you have winning that North Carolina versus Arizona to move to the Final Four? It's nice to see teams that you usually don't see, like you mentioned out of the Pac-12, Arizona going against North Carolina here. But all good things come to an end for Arizona, I think, and I think North Carolina is going to the Final Four and have UConn play against North Carolina. So, Battle of the Huskies versus the Tar Heels, this is definitely and, gonna be something pretty good. And two number one seeds, too. That's... Mm-hmm. That's I'm one that's bold. really, yeah, it's it's hard to pick one number one seeds because it's just so tough to see them get in sometimes. That was the hard thing that I was picking with, between my picks. I'm like, this is all number one seeds is what it feels like. Yeah. But they're, made, they're number one for a reason. Let's see if they yeah. can prove me right. Yeah, and, and number one is not always a bad thing. No. Um, for me, I, I'm going with more mad madness on my bracket. Yeah, so I've got I've got Utah. So in the in the Elite Eight, I've got uh, sorry UConn against Iowa State. I'm going to pick Iowa State to pull off the upset. Iowa State. I mean, it's not that big of an upset. It's a number two seed. Right. But they're just so hot. Yeah. I don't know if they can beat UConn. I think UConn's a dang good team, but if I'm Iowa, pick State Iowa State beats UConn. Ames is gonna burn to the ground. It will, and and wait until you see my bracket even further and see how more crazy oh no. it gets. Oh no! But Alabama versus Arizona is what I've got down there in the West. We got Alabama coming out ahead. I I hate making that pick. I don't like that pick. <laughs> Alabama just scores so many points. They score so many points. It, it's, it's crazy. They put up a hundred hundred some points the other day. No, that's like, true. That th- this is that's this team just of. scores so much. So I've got Iowa State and Alabama on the left side of this bracket, uh, making it to the Final Four. Uh, going over to the South, who wow. do you got? You got uh, see, you had Houston and Marquette, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Going on to the South for Houston versus Marquette, I had a little bit of madness going in my mind. Not all Final Fours can be a number one seed, so I picked number two Marquette beating number one Houston. For my South region, just because, like I said, you can't have all number one seeds. There's always got to be some type of madness going into this tournament. And I think if Marquette gets gets the ball rolling and get it going early and just keep the momentum going, they're going to be going far. And that's why I have them going into my into my Final Four in the South. I but, like it. And then Midwest? <sighs> my you, Midwest. Uh, who, who did you have? You had Purdue and Tennessee, per- right? Yeah, Purdue and Tennessee. Like I said, this was another one to where both teams have been stellar this year. I had one side of my bracket, as you guys have heard, all be number ones on the left side. And my right side of the bracket, I'm going with all number twos. I'm going with Tennessee in the final four against Marquette. So this is definitely going to be one of those situations to where it's definitely going to be a fun final four, no matter who you get in the final four. So name off your final four as a whole. Again, you've got UConn. I got UConn versus North Carolina, and I have Marquette versus Tennessee. 
Marquette, Tennessee. I like that. I like that. No, no matter how you draw this up, this is this is what makes March Madness so much fun. Mm-hmm. Because we, we we're not putting anything in on this. No, these are these are so much fun uh, to just dream up what could be, and then find out that your dreams are crushed. Yeah, uh, so now you have to wait until next year to crush them again. Yep. But um, for me, uh, so I've got. I'm going to start off. Uh, see. I, I already went through that. Okay, so I've I've got uh, I'm working on the South. Right? So I've yeah. got Houston, Houston, and Marquette. I believe in Houston. I think Houston is a very good team. Uh, I believe in Houston. I think they're going to make it. So they're the only number one seed that I have making it okay. to the Final Four. And then go to, going down to the Midwest, Gonzaga, Tennessee. Like I said, Gonzaga is one of those teams you just can't trust in the postseason. They made it all the way to the Elite Eight in my bracket. I believe in Tennessee more than Gonzaga, but again, Tennessee is another team you just can't trust when it comes to tournament time. So this is another another tough one because I had Gonzaga, Purdue. I really don't trust them. Now I got Gonzaga and Tennessee. I don't trust either of them, but I I trust good old Rocky Top. I think they're rock solid. Yes, sir. (laughs) Got that one. Um, So I think they're a little more solid of a team. I think they're going to come out and win that one if it comes down to it. So I've got Houston, Tennessee, Iowa State, Alabama as my final four man which houston only number one seed and then you've got tennessee a two seed alabama mm-hmm. a four seed and iowa state a two seed so josh I, I just want to throw this out there i know if one of us gets this right this will be obviously mind-boggling but just think of this obviously i know we just listed all of our picture but just imagine i'm just going to throw this out there for a final we all know it. if it happens i'm gonna i'm gonna flip the i'm gonna flip out here Imagine Iowa State versus NC State for a final, having an 11 seed versus a number that, two seed. Well, you know, or uh, let's see, I guess the deepest you could go is Clemson. Okay, Clemson <clears throat> would be absurd. NC State, yeah. I could see making it there. Even though they're an 11 seed, I could see them making it there because they're so hot. Clemson came into this and they weren't really that hot. They're a they good basketball look, team. Yeah. They, they just look good. You know, they, they deserve to be in the motions. tournament. Yeah. yeah, but then they, you know, they, the the competition that they've, they've gone against, they've gotten up to this. So if you had like a Clemson NC State ACC championship going all over here crazy. in the national championship game, uh, yeah, I mean that that would be pretty crazy. But uh, in the final four, let's start off on the left side of the bracket. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see who do you you have UConn and North, North, Carolina, North Carolina, right? Yep. Who do you have winning that one? I said it once. I'll say it again. This team is going to the finals, and the Huskies are going to prove them wrong against North Carolina. They're gonna, they're gonna, t- they're gonna take the Tar Heels and knock them all the way back to North Carolina. So, so you got I the Huskies have, winning. I got the Huskies going to the finals. In, okay, so in U- UConn, time. UConn goes to the national championship, <clears throat> and then between, let's see, you had Houston. I had Marquette versus. That's right. You had, yeah, Marquette, Tennessee. Who wins that one? This one was good old Rocky Top. This one was tough because I want to stick with Rocky Top uh-huh. and I want to stick with Marquette here. Okay, so where are you going? I'm, I'm confused. I got some madness going. I'm sorry, Rocky Top, but I got to pick Marquette oh. to go to the finals. All right, this is a Marquette team all the way. I'm going with Marquette here. I'm throwing I'm throwing a hail mary here on with the clock showing point zero one. So I gotta throw something at it. I like it. I like it. So you've got you've got Marquette <clears throat> against you uh, tennis er, against Tennessee. Marquette wins. So you've got Marquette against UConn. Mm-hmm. Who's your national champion? If or should I name off my final four first? Name off your final four first. Okay. Okay. So I've got. Iowa State versus Alabama. I don't have a hard time picking this one at all. Even though I think Alabama may be the better team, I'm picking Iowa State. Uh, I I just I don't think Alabama is going to make it this far into the Final Four. But I just have a hard time looking at this bracket, thinking they could upset Alabama or they could upset North Carolina. And if they do, I think they're better than Arizona. If that's if that's the road they've got there. I'm picking mm-hmm. Alabama to go to the Final Four, but I don't think they're going to make the national championship run. That, that that's not that's not what they're here for. So I think they lose to Iowa State. Iowa State makes it to the national championship, and this is where it gets crazy. Oh. Good old Rocky Top against Houston, right? Mm-hmm. I've got Houston winning against Tennessee. <coughs> 
So now you've got a Big 12 matchup. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but Houston lost in the Big 12 tournament. To Iowa State. To Iowa State. Iowa oh, State oh, comes oh, in there boy. knowing that they, they have their number, right? Yeah. Now, who do, who, do you, who do you have won in your national championship? So you've got UConn versus Marquette. Versus, who do you have won in your national championship? They make it this far. They're a number one seed for a reason, baby. I got to go with them Huskies and UConn. That's right. They, and that, that's, a, that's been, a good pick. They're a very yeah, good team. that's a good pick. They've been favorited a lot. And I'm not doing that aim for favoritism. I was just doing it just for what I think and everything. That's how everybody does it a lot in these bracket situations. But I just st- I just spoke with my gut, and I went with the Huskies of UConn. But, Josh, hit me with your madness because you've been blowing my mind. Who's so here, the here's, here's the madness, right, because you've got Iowa State-Houston, the rematch of – the team, Iowa State, we took these guys down. We got their number. And then Houston, we want revenge. I think this draws up the most beautiful national championship storyline out of just about anything you can really draw up. I'm looking around, and I think, like, there's a cool storyline here and there, but how hot would this be? How heated would this game be? Iowa State versus Houston. Houston gets their revenge, and Houston holds up that trophy. They win the national championship. Um, so that's that's what I got. Uh, I'm going to read off. I forgot to read off Blake's as we went through this. So I've got Houston. You've got UConn um, going all the way through the madness. So with mm-hmm. Blake, uh, he was pretty similar uh, to me. So UConn beats San Diego State. And then Iowa State beats Illinois. So they move on to the Elite Eight. Uh, North Carolina beats Alabama, like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, and probably the smart pick there. And then Arizona beats Clemson. Um, then going over to the other side of the bracket, he has Duke upsetting Houston, my national wow. champion. Hey, it's possible. I, I like that pick, though. I really do. And I think if you've got to pick an underdog, <coughs> just looking at it, an underdog on this list, I'm probably picking Duke. I don't know what the odds are there, but I'm picking Duke over Houston because they're just they're a good team. Oh, and and I, I like that. So he's got Duke beating Houston. Uh, and then he's got Marquette be, beating NC State. So he's got Houston, or sorry, Duke against Marquette there, uh, and then he's got Gonzaga beating Purdue, like I did. A little bit of an upset, but again, two teams you really can't trust. And then, much like you and I, he had Tennessee beating Creighton. Doesn't mean we're not going to be cheering for Creighton. Uh, just because I picked you to lose doesn't mean I don't, I don't want you to win. Yeah, I'm just trying to pick with my brain, and I think Tennessee's the better team, and I guess so does so does Jeremy, and so does Blake. But now he's got UConn. Beats Iowa State in the Elite Eight, moves on to the Final Four. UNC, so North Carolina beats Arizona, moves to the Final Four. So now you've got number one seed UConn versus number one seed North Carolina, just like you did. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then you've got, over on the other side, you've got uh, Duke beats Marquette, goes to the Final Four. Then you've got Tennessee beats Gonzaga, goes to the Final Four. So now you've got UConn versus North Carolina and Tennessee versus Duke for the final four. He's got UConn beating North Carolina. Tennessee beats Dukes. So now you've got UConn versus Tennessee. I like that national championship too. No matter, again, no matter how you draw this up, I love all of these matchups. Mm-hmm. I love all the hypothetical matchups. He has UConn beating Tennessee to be the national champions. Uh, so yeah, I, I Again, I, I love all these matchup uh, possibilities. I'm going to try to do the best I can to put graphics up on the screen. I've only got so much time in a day. We, we record this. Uh, it's going on 7, 720 uh, at night, and I've got stuff to get done, and I've got to edit this. Uh, so you know, I, I'm going to try the best I can to get you guys graphics. If, the, if we don't have graphics on the video, over on YouTube, go make sure to check out our, our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'll make sure to put the graphics out on there at the very least to have our brackets filled out and put out there for you guys. We're going to do a, a separate competition with the Sweet 16 one because we didn't we didn't have time to do the the first round uh, and get on here and, and do our, bra- our full brackets. So we're going to do – we're still going to stay true to it because we filled those out beforehand. Uh, and so we're going to do – most likely Jeremy winning that one, but now we've got the Sweet 16 as well, so we're going to do a separate competition. <laughs> the Sweet 16 is going to be worth a little more. We're going to do 
I'm, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to figure out a good scoring system. I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure something out good we'll because, uh, out. yeah, because I want to look at what we all picked and try <clears> to <throat> figure out a good, a good scoring system where you can earn more for upsets and stuff like that. Yeah. So I want to, I want to do something like that. So we'll, we'll discuss that and we'll post that out there. Um, but overall, this is, this is what we, we come here for March madness. It's here. We're very excited. I, I love talking about this stuff because it's just, it's, it's so much fun. Um, again, looking at the matchups, my Sooners are losing by one point right now going into just under four minutes, <coughs> but they've got the ball back right now. But anyways, guys, if you're into March Madness, please hit that like button if you like this episode. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're growing. And stay tuned for some very big news. We're going to drop it. I promise we're going to drop it. I've been hinting at it for a while now. Um, I don't know if I've given too much away. Some people already know because I've had to tell certain people. Um, but we've got some big news. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it back, man. I, I want to release it. We've got some big news. We're very excited for it. Very excited to, to bring you guys along this journey. We thank you all so much for watching and listening, getting us to this point. Um, if you haven't already, of course, subscribe, like this button, uh, like this video, hit that like button. Uh, you can comment down below. Let us know if you think our brackets are completely stupid because they probably are. Uh, and, uh, you know, just just comment down below, guys. We, we love you guys so much. Uh, we thank you so much for all the support. Of course, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, the best way to help us over there is to give us a five-star review. You can check out everything that we've got at rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com. We'll, we, again, thanks, thanks so much for all of your love, all your support, for watching, for listening. We'll catch you guys on the next one.